it's Jason Stahl with another episode of Under the Radar, and I am very pleased today to have on Mike Mueller, who is the aftermarket ADAS engineer at the SEMA Garage in Detroit. Welcome, Mike. Hi, Jason. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Very excited to have you on the show today. And I wanted to ask you, you know, you guys had the uh, SEMA Garage in the Diamond Bar, California, for a long time. And then I think it was in 2021 that you announced that you were going to have this SEMA garage in Detroit, this 45,000 square foot, you know, huge facility. Tell me a little bit about this new garage you guys have in Detroit. Sure. Our garage in Detroit is almost three times as large as the garage in California. And early on in the um, production of our garage in California, we realized we were already over capacity. And so we needed an extra, extra space. Um, the CEO and the board determined that we needed to be east of the Mississippi. And so they decided to put a garage somewhere in the um, east of the Mississippi for all of our, our uh, SEMA members uh, on, on the East Coast and in the Midwest. Um, our 45,000 square foot garage does three things. We have emissions compliance. Um, we do measurement sessions and scanning of vehicle data. And then um, we did not have the space in California having the foresight to put in an ADAS research center because ADAS is becoming more and more of an issue for our members who modify the trucks. So we're here to help our members research those things. Yeah, as I was reading about the SEMA Garage, it, it really sounds like a, a member benefit, right? If you're a, a company member, a member company, I should say, of SEMA, this, this lab, this, this facility is for you to do product testing and other things, right? It is, it, and we really want it to be like a, a clubhouse for our members. So we have um, several offices that they can use, uh, a boardroom, a conference room, and a 110 seat training room also. So they can they can bring their ideas and thoughts here. They can um, bring their free products and do some fitting onto vehicles. We also have um, parts printing, so we can print parts, they can test them. They can do training up in the training room and then come down on the shop floor uh, we have a 6,000 square foot shop, basically, with uh, all kind of equipment and lifts, everything that you need to uh, make product, produce product, design and develop product. Uh, we have a 6,000 square foot garage to do everything that you need to do to design and develop new products for vehicles. Awesome. It sounds great. And so you really haven't been open that long. Tell me how it's going. Are you guys running on all cylinders? Are member companies utilizing the space? Um, are you guys still tweaking or still building out? Or are you guys like kind of rolling right now? All of that, Jason, all of that, because um, we, we're still working on our um, EPA approvals for the dynamometer. Um, our ADAS lab is in, in full swing in our measurement sessions. We've had two measurement sessions, both with uh, Ford vehicles and with uh, Chevy GM vehicles here. Um, but our training room in the facility is probably the largest draw right now where we're getting at least two or three uh, events a week where people come in from small groups of two, three, or five to groups of 70 to 100, um, utilizing the training room, utilizing the garage space for all kinds of product development, training, um, and and uh, actually, you can also use the facility. Our members can also use the facility for video shoots, for social media product releases, um, all all manner of things. Whatever the, the members want, and that's why we're here. We're here for our members uh, to be able to provide them a venue and a space that they may not have access to in their own facility. Awesome. And you know, Mike, what's got me really excited about the facility is the ADAS lab. Tell me about all the capabilities you have in this space age ADAS, ADAS lab that you guys have created there. So from the ground up, uh, we looked at what is the optimal environment for an ADAS facility. So we are also educators. Sometimes I call myself an ADAS evangelist because my job is to elevate our members, the ones that know um, about ADAS, they're already working on it, but there are a lot of our members that don't understand the implications of modifying vehicles. So we put this ADAS research center in so they have an environment that is an optimum situation where they can see how to do calibrations, what needs to be calibrated. Um, the, the ADAS labs, we have two of them. One is an independent aftermarket lab. Uh, one is an OEM lab, to be open and truthful with you, because all of the OEMs actually have an aftermarket division. And we're located here in Detroit to be able to support those OEM aftermarket divisions also. 
Um, but in our independent aftermarket lab, we have every flavor of ADAS calibration equipment from Snap-on and Hunter to Bosch, Autel, AirPro. And then we, those are all of the hardwares for ADAS calibration. But then we also have the scan tools, right? So we have the OEM scan tools all on one laptop available for our members to, to use um, to develop the product. Wow, you know, it's interesting. You're kind of in a unique position there where you get to see some cutting edge uh, development and evolution of this equipment, right? We have ADAS equipment out there right now, but as we know, it's constantly evolving and changing. Uh, and, and who knows, it might even change even more with the, the more sophisticated cars get. Um, and they're also talking about, you know, in the future, cars being able to self-calibrate. But, you know, you're in a unique position where you're kind of see you're on the you're on the kind of the front lines of seeing this. Well, is there anything you can tell us about what you see as the future and moving forward with with the development of ADAS equipment? Yes. Yeah, so so just I've been here for just a little bit over a year. I left Bosch, my 22 year career at Bosch, um, and I decided to uh, be able to help help members. Um, the idea here is that we saw that automatic emergency braking was going to become standard. So there's some precedences out there similar to uh, ABS and similar to um, electronic stability control. Those items came Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard requirement by NHTSA. And we saw, you know, before this building was actually built, uh, we saw that automatic emergency braking and pedestrian automatic emergency braking was going to become a standard. And that's what you see in the background here. Um, so I, what I didn't tell you about the garage here is that we don't just stay static here in the SEMA garage. We go out on the road and we actually do testing of vehicles. Um, in the background, you can see that we're working with TRC, uh, the Transportation Research Center in Central Ohio. And we're testing on behalf of members the effects of what happens on a vehicle uh, when you modify, lift, or lower a vehicle. What happens to the ADAS functions? So those functions include um, the automatic cruise control, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, pedestrian and not automatic emergency braking, traffic jam assist, uh, a, a plethora of ADAS functions I could go on and on. But they all do become affected when you modify a vehicle. And the OEMs don't necessarily endorse that, but we're here kind of centrally located in Michigan near the hub of a lot of research centers and uh, technology centers for the automotive OEM so that we can collaborate with them and, and make sure that they see what we're doing here in the aftermarket because it's important for the whole industry. Yeah, right. I mean, lift kits is part of an aftermarket accessory and whatnot. And, and we, we've talked about how this can affect the car with the ADAS systems. Have you guys drawn any general conclusions, I mean, about that? I mean, uh, is there any way around... Uh, uh, you know, if you want to lift your truck or, or do something like that, is there any way around being able to do that, but also having your ADAS function properly? Yeah, so that's a good question, Jason. Jason. Today, the um, all of the ADAS functions can be turned off, right? So you can turn off your lane departure warning, you can turn off um, your automatic cruise control, um, but that's the whole point. With automatic emergency braking becoming a required federal motor vehicle safety standard, um, we will not be able to turn that off in the future. It's similar to, you know, I've been around for a little while. There's a few gray hairs on my head. And um, it's very similar to airbags in the late 1980s and early 1990s, where we could turn airbags off before the government mandated them. So today, automatic emergency braking can be turned off. But in the future, it won't be able to. NHTSA is providing a, um, four to, a three to four year phase in time frame. So we don't really see the standard taking effect until... 2028 or 2029 specifically for the aftermarket members of SEMA. Um, but I think that with all of this coming coming forward, we, we, we know that technology progresses. There is a technology curve for every technology that comes along. And we can only see that the future be more and more complex with more safety features and more things that help us drive efficiently, simply, and, um, and, and help the, the consumer in general but that does add complexity to the vehicle. So that's why we're here to support our members. Talk to me, Mike, about this optimal environment you have there for calibration. We talk about it in the magazine all the time, how you have to have a level floor that's validated as level, you know, non-reflective surfaces, neutral colors, things of that nature, no sun glare. 
talk to me about how you fine tuned that environment to be perfect for calibration. Yeah, we were very lucky. Um, again, prior to my arrival here at CIMA a year ago, uh, the, the membership or the, uh, the management here actually pulled all of those individual providers that supply the equipment and the OEM um, um, recommendations, and they kind of homologate them all into one large document and took the, the, the law of averages for all of those things. So what type of lighting do we need? How dim should it be? What are the lumens required? Um, the flatness of the floor, like you said, the colors of the floor and the wall, the blandness of the room. It's really a very bland, manila-colored room um, with non-reflective surfaces. Even radars reflect off the floor if it's shiny, believe it or not. So there are all kinds of considerations that we needed to put in place to have an optimal situation here. Uh, we have a 40 by 60, 40 foot by 60 foot room. Now we know most people can't do that, but again, we're a show place to, to show what the optimal environment could be. And uh, we showed that at the SEGA show last year um, at the SEWA, uh, in the tools and equipment area. Um, so we were able to provide members with kind of a virtual environment to show them what they need to do uh, if they want to enter into this business. And many people have entered into this business. There is a diverging business model for ADAS calibration. It's starting in the collision industry, really. Talk to me about your capacity and bandwidth there. I mean, if you have multiple member companies that want to come in on the same day, could you handle that? Or do you have to be very rigorous with your scheduling? Yeah, so it's a combination of both. Right now, there's one ADAS engineer, that's me here, but we are looking to expand as we grow the business model here for our members. We think that more members will be coming to the garage. Right now, we're able to manage um, the uh, balance of the OEM and have to work at uh, member usage at the facility. If I'm a collision repair facility in Detroit and I want to get my guys trained on ADAS, could I come to you or is, that's just not what this is? This, this is more of a testing no, lab. No, for it, is, it is what it is. You're, you're, you're spot on. So it's not so much for the local community, but they're welcome. If they're a SEMA member, they have access to the garage just like any other SEMA member. But really, it's our uh, partners in, in um, the ADAS calibration area. So Autel and Hunter and Snap-on. AirPro, Opus, all the ones that uh, are Bosch, all of the ones that are uh, donated equipment to the SEMA garage, they use the facility to do local training. You are correct. So it's more of a it's more of a program to organize thing than just a one off member coming by. But it's 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 starting to come to fruition. Yes. Is your ADAS presence at SEMA this year going to be bigger and better? I know you guys had. Uh, some dedicated space to that over the last couple shows, and now you got the garage, obviously. But but obviously at the show you're going to have a, a real presence as far as uh, uh, what you can do with with ADAS and technology. Uh, talk to me about. Do you, do you know the plans yet for for this show this year? I do. I know the plans, I, I know the plans because I have to share the wealth here, right? So um, last year we had a huge space, and it was the first year for the SEMA Garage doing ADAS at the SEMA show. Uh, what I've been told as it takes one to three years to develop a real trade show booth that is effective. And so last year we had way too much space. Uh, we had about 15 different participants who were again, partners of SEMA who have either donated or participated in the SEMA Garage Detroit for ADAS. This year, we're going to split it into those three sections um, that I mentioned earlier. We're going to have a SEMA Garage Services booth. Um, that will be both, uh, will, that will have all three items. The emissions compliance will be a third booth. Um, the measurement sessions and or uh, product development, mechanical engineering will be a third of the booth. And then ADAS will be a, uh, a little bit more than a third of the booth. Uh, but what's different this year is we're going to have all of the uh, equipment available for real product demonstration. So we will have a vehicle, a truck, most likely a lifted truck uh, in the ADAS section. And we'll have um, you know, battery maintainer on the truck, and we'll have power to all of the equipment that's necessary. And we'll have scheduled demonstrations by all of those partner participants that I had just previously mentioned. So yeah, it's bigger and better this year. It's a little bit more compact for ADAS, but uh, I think the other thing that we're going to do is we're also going to highlight this federal motor vehicle safety standard for automatic emergency braking. So it's, it's really at the notice for public rulemaking step right now. It's not a standard yet. Um, they're asking for input on the standard, uh, but our job here at SEMA is to 
uh, to share that information uh, with our members. And so we will have a little bit of an area also within the ADAS area explaining the implications of automatic emergency braking and uh, pedestrian automatic emergency braking on modified vehicles. At least the considerations that you need to think about when you're designing aftermarket products. So yeah, thanks for asking the question. So Mike, you guys have a SEMA garage on the West Coast now, you have a SEMA garage in the Midwest. Are there any plans in the future to open up more SEMA garages in other places of the country? So I can't speak to that specifically, but I can tell you that this SEMA garage in Detroit is the single largest investment that SEMA has ever made in facilities. So I, I think we need to get up and running here for several years before we can make that determination. But I think there is a demand for this around the country. And um, you know, being centrally located here in the Midwest, we pull from you know Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, as far as driving distances, and we're only 20, 25 minutes from the Detroit Metro Airport uh, as a location uh, for, our, for our members. If I'm a member company, whether I'm a collision repair facility, an auto service center, or a manufacturer or a supplier, how would I uh, schedule a tour uh, of your facility if I wanted to check it out? Sure. So we have this, it's semagarage.com is the website. And right on the website is our, all of the contact information uh, regarding, just, just send an email to semagarage.com um, and uh, you'll, you'll get a response from our general manager, uh, Ben Kaminsky, or any one of us, our functional leaders for the missions, product development, um, or ADAS, whatever your interest is, we can provide a, a, a tour. We also have a virtual tour that we can provide uh, with our point presentation if people can't make it here. So yeah, have them uh, contact us at semagarage.com and uh, we'll be happy to give them a tour. Um, the, the facility, as you know, is quite impressive. Yes, and you know, uh, um, I've got to come see it myself, Mike. I'm only a hop, skip, and a jump uh, from you in Cleveland, Ohio. So uh, I hopefully I'm next on your list there to get a tour. I would love to see it. It looks like a very exciting facility. Just to give you a scale, Jason, of the facility, and it's not easy with, uh, with this interview, but um, we had our grand opening just short of a year ago. It was uh, August 18th or 19th, I think, last year. We had 750 people in at one time. Wow, that's impressive. It, it's large, it's, it's very large. And, it, and it's a large venue also that's available to members um, for a fee depending on the activity. If it's a small group, we, we can accommodate them in the front offices, in the, in the, in the boardroom, conference room. But if it's a larger group, then we, we have a small nominal fee, much less than anything they pay at a hotel, conference room, or, or anything like that. So we, we encourage our members to, to, to use the facility. It's really a clubhouse for them that can use the office. We do have people occasionally come in just for the internet, you know, because uh, they're local or close by and they, they want a, uh, a place to sit down and have a conference call. So the whole spectrum is available. I like that, a clubhouse for them. It sounds real cozy. <laughs> It is, and it's, if, you, if you're a car aficionado, uh, there are people here that have interest in all different types of, whether it's drag racing or modified vehicles or, or NASCAR or just just anything car related. Everybody here is a, is a, is a car nerd, I have to say. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mike, for being on the podcast today. I really appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for showcasing this beautiful new facility that SEMA's built. Well, well, thank you, Jason. And I'm going to take you on a small tour here right before the end to show you oh, the sure. facility. Wonderful. Right? Let's, so let's I've got check it out. Monitor. This may not work real well, but I want to show you that we we at SEMA make sure that we have the environment for our members. This room is a 40 by 60 room. And I'm just going to spin you around. I won't be on screen here. But you'll see here that we have all of the equipment uh, from all of our supplier partners necessary to do the ADAS calibration. Uh, one of the things you'll see here, the, the um, desktops are all wood and the, the desks and the drawers are all plastic, right? So that there's no reflection from anything for the radar calibration. This is how big the room is. Here's a, a Chevy pickup truck. Um, and you'll see it's very bland and boring in the background, but that's what's needed for a proper ADAS environment. And then the other side of the room, we have our Autel partner there with all of their equipment. Uh, Bosch and Hunter have also provided equipment. And then we have a snap-on John Bean TruePoint system. Um, so everyone has jumped in and, and volunteered to, uh, to help us here. Um, 
and have a, a great environment for our members to be able to come in and explore different things in a very comfortable environment and uh, be trained if they have if they so are interested to be trained by the oh, by the uh, uh, the companies that have provided the equipment. So again, we invite everybody to the SEMA garage, whether you're a SEMA member or not, to explore and learn about ADAS emissions and our product development. That's a slick setup, Mike. Thanks for that little tour there. And thanks Thank for being so on much. the podcast today. Thank you. It's great having you. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of Under the Radar. For more episodes, visit bodyshopbusiness.com.